In our first section, there was an invitation to come, to satisfy your thirst. And next, we'll see an exhortation to seek the Lord. Now, let's look at that verse. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Then it gives some instruction of what that looks like. When you're seeking after something, how do you proceed? <clears throat> if there's a pressing time constraint, what you know, changes for you? For example, what's something you've lost or misplaced? Last week, I was at High V. I I got back to the dairy section and I went to check my grocery list on the phone and my phone is gone. Now it was supper time. I was already running 15 minutes late and I had Indian food from Curry Out in the van. That's on 30th Street in Rock Island, by the way. I recommend it. But do you think I said, oh, well, I'll just get the groceries, eat supper, and I'll come back when it's more convenient. After all, supper is getting cold in the van. No, obviously not. But the first thing I did was I tried to call Hannah to let her know I'd misplaced my phone and that I was going to be a bit late. Then I realized I can't do that without my phone. <laughs> so then I started playing through a bunch of scenarios like, how much personal information is on my phone anyway? How hard would it be for someone else to get into my phone? Answer, probably not very hard. What will I have to do to secure all of my information at this point? And meanwhile, I'm retracing my steps somewhat frantically through the store, trying not to look like a maniac, but going as quickly as I can. I go up to customer service and I, I say, hey, my name is Buffalo. No, I didn't say Buffalo. I said Scott Moore. And my phone number is, I can't leave you my phone number because that's what I'm trying to find. My wife's phone number is this in case anybody finds my phone. There was an urgency to it related to the amount of time. Story update. I did find my phone. It had fallen into the avocado bin it was blending in really well. The avocados were dark. My phone is dark. It was good. But when you seek, it's, it's pressing. It's urgent. Now, you might look at your life now and think, I'm young. I've got time to seek the Lord later. But you don't know that. The word here says to seek the Lord while he may be found. There will come a point at which this offer is no longer valid. Now, I don't know if there comes a point here on earth where God just turns a person over to their hard-heartedness, but I can say this. Once you've died, you've missed your chance to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Now, if you're thirsty and you want to find true satisfaction for your thirst, you need to stop seeking other means of satisfaction. But also... If you're not seeking the Lord, it might be because you are actually hiding from the Lord. Let's look back at that text again. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord. Sin has a convincing way of making us play hide and seek. Imagine this kid goes out to hide, and you count to 50, and instead of going to find him, you go hide from him instead. This game is not going to end well. I remember at least one time when our daughter, Karis, was maybe three years old, and she was playing hide-and-seek so well that her siblings and her cousins just gave up looking for her. Eventually, I guess she came out of hiding because we've seen her since then. And come to think of it, maybe that's how you win the game from the hider's perspective. <laughs> but I promise you, if there had been a greater motivation, a greater urgency, they would not have quit. Maybe if ice cream had been on the line. Sin makes us want to hide because we realize we've broken the relationship. Look at Adam and Eve in the garden. God says, where are you, Adam? I realized I was naked, so I hid. Why did they hide? Because they knew they had sinned. Look at Achan in the book of Joshua. What did he do when he had stolen the plunder. He hid it. Now, the other day, and this is not the only time this has happened, but Micaiah, our two-year-old, had been playing in the family room, and I realized that I hadn't heard him in a while. And that's always a little bit unsettling. So I went to check on him. I called his name. No answer. I looked around the room. Can't see him anywhere. I poked my head into the bathroom, and there he is, curled up, face down, on the bathroom floor. Hey, buddy, what are you doing in here? Don't find me. 
Why can't I find you? I'm hiding. Why are you hiding? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you? You must not eat it. I can almost hear God asking in the same way that I asked the next question that came out of my mouth. Did you poop? Yes. Now, he knows that pooping is for the potty chair. Don't get me wrong. He hasn't sinned. He's a two-year-old. But there's still something inherently shameful about sitting in your own poop, and he knows it. So he hides. But here's what I want to tell you, seniors and church. Don't hide when you realize you've sinned. Don't run from God. Turn to him. Repent. Ask him to change the way you see things. Seek the Lord and live.